the institute memento to the guest of honor, Professor Vijay E. Bhattar, Chairman, DOG, IIT Delhi. The director of NID Center, Professor N. P. Deshpande, will now present the institute memento to Professor Ashish Dutta, Chairman, DOG, NID Center. Ladies and gentlemen, the director of LIT Center will now present a report on the activities and achievements of the institute during the year 2012 and 13. Dr. Hush, Professor Asis Dutta, Chief Guest of Samotation for the Honor of Honor President of India, Bharat Ratna, Dr. Katie Dick, Dr. Kalam, Dr. Bhaskar, Chairman of the UIS Delhi, Dr. Pradash Amri, Dr. Munda Amri, members of the Board of Governors, members of the Senate, invited to the Chiefs, graduating students and their proud parents, and family members, my faculty and staff, members of the media and press. I take immense pleasure in extending a warm welcome to this August gathering on the occasion of the 11th promotion of the National Institute of Technology Centre. On this momentous occasion, I take the opportunity to welcome the Honourable former President of India and Bharat Ratna Dr. A.T. Yadrukalam, a man of deep wisdom, vast experience and whose presence and certain have made our graduating students feel special today. Sir, I would like to extend a very special welcome, welcome to you to the institute. I also welcome Dr. Bhaskar, who is best known as the architect of the India's national initiative in super company and the development of the forum supercomputer. We are fortunate today that Dr. Prakash Amde and Dr. Manda Amde, Magasasi Award winners, and many dignities have kindly consented to raise the occasion with their all the I extend my heartiest welcome to all of you. We at NIT Center are committed to widening the frontiers of our knowledge and work diligently to meet and solve new challenges. I consider it my privilege to present before you a brief account of our academic and other milestones that we have achieved during the year and also share our dreams of building an institute of excellence. 546 undergraduate students were admitted in this institute in the six engineering disciplines, 160 postgraduates and 58 in this college. The real strength of an institute lays in the academic potential of its faculty members. Till date, we have 120 faculty, faculty at senior level and efforts are being made to attract faculty. I expect that the faculty members get themselves involved in more research related activities, work together in interdisciplinary fields and contribute towards the development of the institute. I appreciate the way in which our faculty are striving hard to achieve various milestones in their career and in their teaching as well. I extend my full support in all their endeavors. The library is actually said to be by all of an educational institution. NIT Silja plays a vital role in academic and research activities by providing facility for creation and dissemination of the knowledge. Silja is one of the biggest technical libraries in Northeast India. This is the first library in the entire Northeast region to implement RFID, e-learning solution and media technology for library security purposes and to have a digital library. The faculty members, research scholars, undergraduate students have been actively pursuing research in a number of areas. The institute has received a number of sponsored projects from various funding agencies like PSP, CSIR, MHRD, ERDO, Ministry of Information and Technology, BRNS, BRC and MNR. With the ICT recognizing NIT Center as PIP Center in all the disciplines, we have two seats each in each branch. We have also worked hard on the implementation of pension from uh, GPFC. We have been 390 employees, teaching and non-teaching, would be benefited 
Professor Ashish Datta, Chairman DOG NIT Future, will now address the convocation. Today is a very special occasion. You will see that our guest of honor, the son, Bill Kalam, very highly respected. I'm sure all of you know. First President by the Bharat Rajasthan to South Africa. I really were happy that you could find some time to come to Shinta. Many, many thanks for that. And it's a honor that Bhaktar is here. I am really happy that in a Shinta, you know, and the doctors, you know that, but they are going to, you know, that is your hands to develop a group that is Really, we are happy that the problem. You are coming here, and also, you know, that at least two hours later. Now, the director, the artist, what he did that is the effort. That's the point. Let me tell you one thing that when I got the telephone call, said we have to agree as the chairman of the board of governance. I didn't know him. So I thought that maybe he was okay. But this is a whole other thing. But really, you know, I say congratulations to you. So what is the first question? And not only that, it's a kind of a very open and transparent. Any matter, you know, that it has been very important. And what also affected me. It's a kind of a social bench. It's easy to go and just see and take care of the body, but how is a program and do that? Like we are talking about the kids, you know, that it's not the playground, the school. And apart from that, it's a kind of a development also, I think that it should be good. I can tell you that one thing that I cannot you know that is that I came. That Kalam, we knew each other, I was talking to him, then I found that this is that very cool. And why it was the year to chat. I was lucky that I was remember him here in that time. After that, of course, you know the self location. And as a vice for the you know, the business that is necessary. So you have to interact, not occasionally, it's very closely, and it's a kind of a privilege. And also, I find that when you say, that comes today, you know, that I'm sure that all of you are thinking that like that. But you know that it's a kind of a conversation to, you know, the young stars. We are getting the degree to that effort. And ultimately, we have reached the state. I always tell that we have to go up and up and up. Your journey has come. And destination, you should not talk, they know the destination. You see that all the time you know that, your journey you know that. To achieve something for your own know, effort, how the society can get better. I always tell youngsters that you can get better, you can get this tradition from the you know, that all including your parents. But all this I tell that you have followed your own path. You know that this is the way I want to move up. Is the way I want to do that. I am 
show the out below that it's a kind of a, just I noticed that when you have all the tegos and all that things in your bowl. Let me tell you that say it goes and say that okay when they say that all your own part. You need to adjust in the cave now, stay the way I must have to say. If nobody wants to listen, doesn't matter. You know that it's the way you have to go up. You say kind of the beginning of your journey. Keep it in mind that say, I am hardly not going to be okay if you do that statement. Get in TV and I think that that will take you a long way to understand it. But you want to take all the skills that you aspire. You should not be out of position. You know this is the kind of a thing what you have to do. It's not that job you are doing that. It's a passion. You know that this is the way you can achieve your goal. I think that this is what we ain't now. Thank you very much, you know that is a kind of a privilege to at least all these people who are there, all some dignitaries are there, and all young kids are there, you know, that's the thing. Thank you very much. Again, you know that, you know that. please, you know that, okay, you will great time with the color, and please quite happy to come and visit now, see that what exciting that you might Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Vijay Bhatkar is one of the most acclaimed scientists and IT leaders of India. He is best known as the architect of India's first supercomputer, Parun, and as the founder and executive director of CDAC, India's national initiative in supercomputing. He has been honored with Padma Shri and Maharashtra Bhushan Awards. Dr. Bhatkar has served as a member of the Scientific Advisory Committee to the Prime Minister of India and member of the Governing Council of CSIR. Dr. Bhatkar has authored and edited 12 books and 80 research and technical papers. He is presently the Chairman, POG, IIT Delhi, and Chairman of ETH Research Lab. Professor Vijay P. Bhatkar, the guest of honor, will now deliver his address. Chief Guest of today's convocation, Bharat Ratna Dr. A.P. Abdul Kalam, Chairman of the Board of Governors of NIT Institute, India's foremost genetist and I must say genetic engineer. The dynamic director of NIT Institute, to whose initiatives we are seeing great transformations here, my friend Professor Mishkan Deshpande, our very special guest on this occasion, the next as a award winners. Dr. Patan Jamde and Mandate Yamde and the entire family, distinguished members of the Board of Governors, members of the Senate, faculty members, staff members, invitees, friends from the media, and most importantly, the graduating students of the United States. Let me greet all of you on this very, very special occasion. First, I would like to offer my heartiest congratulations to all the graduating students who are receiving their graduate degree, postgraduate degrees, and also doctoral degrees. 
And especially those who have distinguished themselves in academic excellence and also those who have made a mark in many extracurricular activities, particularly the village development programs that the great of many. On this momentous occasion, I am sure, my dear friends, my dear students, you will remember the sacrifices your parents have made to make this day possible for you. The contributions of your parents, contributions of your mentors, of your teachers, of your friends, we must all be, we must all be grateful to them because I think it's a gratitude if at all one sign of education, good education and culture is gratitude. So we are grateful to all of them on this occasion. Friends, as I remember here, NIDs were started originally as REC, Regional Engineering College. And as the result of original dream of the founding fathers of our nation, particularly Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, and his friends, who decided that the future of India has to be steered and to be created for the foundations of science and technology. And that's how I think in the university, the IITs, and then on the NIT were created. Over 14 REC's were created during the period 1938 to 65, and REC, 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 REC was created in 67, way back in 67. I am also a graduate of the BRC, now BNIT, not good. And in this process, we have created IIT, during this period, we have created IIT which are become world class We are all proud of our IIDs. And then for the reason that why not we take more IIDs after the IIDs we are created. When the whole plan was presented by that time, the then IIT minister, Dr. Manoj Manoj Joshi, who was the other who was the prime minister at that time. But I think the cost of creating new IIDs was particular. And at that time it was seen that the more good and to upgrade the IOC into that for us, for the then to be known as NIDs and a committee was founded today. So uh, I know a little committee for RECs was founded today, was chaired by my very dear friend of the Arika Shelter and a report was presented, strategic program for academic excellence for people in RECs in 1990. NIT future, what we see is today as a NIT future came into existence as a result of experimentation. Today, NIT's future is one of the top, I must report, one of the top engineering colleges of India and we must be all of it for that. I just saw a figure that today we have, when we were studying, there were hardly 30 to 35 engineering colleges across India, technical institutions. Today, there are 3500, 100 times of the, the, that number. And if you look at the number of colleges we have got, this one, we have 8,000 engineering colleges and colleges in the country. It's coming now, I think, the admission of close to 2.5 million of graduates as well as the others. This is one of the largest, I think, network of technical institutions in the world. I remember the figure when, I remember when uh, Bill Gates was making a presentation, foundational presentation, and he was saying that what I mean, India is going to in the country of America. Why? Because they are creating uh, several times, ten times the engineering graduates of what US is going to create. We have gone far beyond that. Today we are creating largest engineering graduates, taking the graduates of the two hours across the country and two five five million, I mean almost like million students are taking as in this process. This is the market. I am the chairman of the Board of Governors of IHL. And they always talk about the vision. They always talk about the vision of NIT. We talk about the vision of IIT or so much. In this context, I must say that sometimes bad if you are celebrating the golden jubilee of IIT and before that super India of IIT, the thought has come to and one comment was made in the US in Silicon Valley that it is easier to get admission in the MIT of the United States but not in the IIT of India. So I think we are able to take such things. Now our goal, friends, is to create a great NIT to the IIT level. Whereas by the IIT is trying to get more of the institution like MIT, it's not necessarily the same thing, but we are trying to go that way. And this thing is feasible. And how can we do that? By adopting the curriculum of IIT, by 
routing the grid, I mean the best practices what I have to follow. And that's why that to that. That's why many of the routing schools I was talking to many faculty members, they are saying I Delhi, I think I did a Kanpu, I did a Kanpu, I did a PAD. So I think that culture has been brought in and that is one of the very things we have to take. We have created a national program with technology and us learning from the IITs to get high quality people within the faculty and that program has been created. I would like and I insist to take advantage of that. You already have that time, you are taking I mean, many initiatives in that direction, talk about the library. I think we are taking initiatives to have the NPTEL program, I think also implemented with the students and study from the NPTEL was taught by, I think, gained by I think. Uh, while working on the IIT students, we didn't analyze it, we must recognize that 21st century belongs to India. And already India is the third largest economy. Many of us don't know that India, one of the poorest countries at the time of independence, is the, is the third largest economy at the already crossed the ahead of first Germany and then Japan, and we are the third largest economy of the world. US, China, and now India. And now we are the further mass which are going on. The recent reports that have come, I think all our writers have a right to know that they have said that. By looking at the competitive positions of the nations in the 21st century, a lot of intelligence was done, and a lot of people at least study that in the, what is called forecasting of the futures of the nation. The report shows that in the years to come, China will overtake the United States in the 30s. And that will happen, the United States itself at this time, this may happen because of the growth rate, what is happening at that time, the recession which are enveloped, US and also large European countries, and many nations are collapsing. So I think that is, but the report further says that not only China is going to hold the United States, but India is going to hold China in the 40s, and that is what I think we have to create. But I was here the destiny of India, it is in that region. I will not be there, the mouse will not be there. But you will see the day when in the 21st century India, you will see the day, like right? perhaps some of you will see the year, that you will see the day when India will go. I think the most, the leading nation of the world, number one nation of the world. This is the destiny you are here. We must remember that the RACs were originally created to develop of the region, not to the region, but to national development. We have to develop the region as well. We have to develop the communities. We have to, by one side, we are able to create some remarkable things. I think the progress which are making science and technology. Dr. A.T. Abdul Kalam wanted to build a space program, the science program, and we look at it now in the Biotechnology program, our chairman has contributed, many of you have contributed. We are wanting the satellites of other nations, we never saw. Dr. Vikram Basarabha used to talk about it, but we are now not only wanting our own satellite, but satellites, experimental satellites of other nations. We are getting supercomputers going from beta scale to exa scale, which will be using a large initiative to the SAR, to plug into that beta scale, exa scale supercomputers, that the computing power, the storage, or the intelligence, the software things will be available to everybody on the iPads or on the Akash like devices to do and that is the thing we are talking about. Is it feasible? Friends, we never thought that if there was not possible to make a call from Sinjir to Guwahati, I think there is a problem here, something like that we are now doing. We have 2G networks, 3G networks, 4G networks we are talking about and today we have a population of 97 million, 97 crore people have mobiles and people in villages. They have mobiles, they have mobiles but no violence. So there are very interesting things which are happening when we saw the technology which are done here. Leading IT power of the world. From nothing, from nothing to an IT star in their foreign policy, the world IT was, the world IT was not known. Today they are exporting close to 18 billion dollars of software. 100 billion dollars in industry. And when India is a 2 billion, not only 2 billion, but 2.5 and multiply by that in the PPC5 credit economy. This we are saying before that. But the future is very important. I have no doubt that India will be the leading nation in economic terms. I have no doubt in terms of science and technology. Even the education system will be able to change. But I have problems of the kind like there is what I would have what is the status of the religion. And that's why I want the initiative which I have taken for the schools, for the village schools, for the modern schools, what you are in the many problems which you have got. On one side we have, we have produced grains which are not in the storages, I think of. Uh, but on the other side, people don't have to do it, it's one big thing. This is actually a great, great challenge for India. And these are the problems you have to solve. Today is the great, I think it's because of the push of AICC, I think we are trying to publish papers. We have published 76 papers, we have published papers, we have published papers, we have published papers, high impact papers, we have started doing that. But we have to talk about to make high impact in the society. 
Now we are the engineers are supposed to solve the problem and we are being tied back in the society. And that's what I have to give you examples of. I think you read uh, Dr. Prakash Ambed's book and that will inspire How that high back can be made sitting in the remotest of places. The whole family is going to be devoted. It's what transformation can be done. Lastly, I would say there was a question to Dr. Abdul Salam on Dr. Chapman School asked the question and uh, our president, former president, really admired the issue of corruption. The issue of corruption, the issue of politics, politics is everywhere. Politics is an integral part of us and politics is like any other branch of government or any other open endeavor is going to there. Of course, I have mean, no problem on that now. But corruption is not operating in the politicians alone. We are all fully part of that now. We don't eradicate corruption. I think the engineering can get built in India, infrastructure, technology, everything. We are integral part of that. We have to take a place today. If we don't gain India's future, we have to change ourselves. We have to take a place on occasions, solemn occasions like this, that we will not participate in this kind of thing. In fact, the great dream of India, I think I really request all of you that we will be this. We must try to keep engineering at this point. We will not do it. And this is enough. If one, one college does it, or one institution like this does it, it is enough to start the whole world coding. Lastly, I will say that, ah, uh, you will look back and get the memory of what you learned. Engineer by definition, engineer by definition must solve problems. We should not say that this cannot be done because of this reason, financial reason, bureaucracy, this, 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 can be a ten number of reasons. But engineer by definition, we have to solve problems under constraints. And I think we have a great, great big mind for the process and we have to solve the problems of the nature. What do they, you know, we visual people like that is the message we want to give. Hence, I have no doubt India will become a superpower. I don't like that word superpower. I know there's no question on that. But India was a jagged group. I think we have to get the knowledge power, we have to become the new, new direction to the whole world, to ourselves, to our society, to our development. That is the challenge. My dream is that by 2047, when India celebrates the centenary of their independence, when you are sitting here, all the time you are celebrating the day like this, the location or any other concept, India's independence at that time, India should become the general group, the knowledge society of the world. And that is the dream we are beginning for like daily institutions of this time. I wish you all the best and uh, see the dream and realize that dream. Thank you very much. This is a proud moment for United Center to confer the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa, to the former President of India and one of the distinguished scientists of our country, Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam. Chairman Senate, I have the honor to present A.P.J. Abdul Kalam for admission to the degree of Doctor of Science, Honoris Causa, in recognition of his outstanding contribution to society. He was president of our country from 2002 to 2007 and one of its most distinguished engineers and technologists. Dr. Kalam graduated in science from St. Joseph's College, Fiji in 1954 and specialized in aeronautical engineering from Madras Institute of Technology in 1957. He made a significant contribution to developing India's first indigenous satellite launch vehicle in 1980 that signaled India as an exclusive member of the world space club. Dr. Kalam has also collaborated with medical specialists to develop the Kalam resistant and orthosis telecom. Dr. Kalam is also a professor of technology and societal transformation at Anna University, Chennai and has been actively involved in his speaking and research programs. At Chairman Typec, he led 500 experts to establish Technology Vision 2020 that produced a roadmap to assist transforming India into a developed nation. In 1997, Dr. Kalam was awarded India's highest civilian honor, Harold Ratno, for his scientific and technological contributions to the nation and has received many other awards including Padma Vidushan in 1990 and Padma Bhushan in 1981. Dr. Kalam has the distinction of receiving the 2008 Uber Medal and the 2007 King Charles II Medal 
for science and technology awarded by the Royal Society of the United Kingdom. He is author of several well-known books including Ignited Minds, Wings of Fire and India 2020, a vision for the new millennium. Dr. Kalam continues to play an influential role in encouraging the uptake of science and technology by young people, particularly the economically disadvantaged. Chairman Sinan, I present APJ Abdul Kalam for admission to the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa and I invite you to confirm the degree of him. Ladies and gentlemen, the former president of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, Bharat Ratna, will now deliver the convocation address. Michael Faraday and, and Thomas Alva Edison in sequence. 
you know, all the three would be are other connected. Uh, Humphrey, uh, David, Michael, Perry, Perry, and Thomas Alva, it is a secret. Sir Humphrey David at that time was a member of Royal Society and a famous scientist in chemistry. He was called chemist of Europe in those days. Director, uh, he was an director of chemistry. Michael Faraday came across a book in the library, The Improvements of Minds. When he finished the reading that book, Michael Faraday had prepared mind to somehow to join Sir Humphrey Davy to study, to research in the area of chemistry, physics, and electricity. At last, Michael Faraday got a temporary job in Sir Humphrey Davy's lab, chemical lab, electrochemical lab. And he was given the work of cleaning the lab and equipment. Michael Faraday was given the cleaning the lab and the equipment. After a month, Sir Humphrey David felt that Michael Faraday had the skill of experiments and asked him to participate in the experiment as recording. This recording of experiments elevated the mind of Sir Humphrey David. Slowly, Michael Faraday was empowered for full experiment and he indicated creativity and innovation of a new phenomena on magnetism. Then one day he generated electricity by magnetism and we all know Faraday's law. Whereas, Thomas and my agent's life was different. There were no teachers and schools in his life. He was told. Whenever you see the light and burn, you are remembering Thomas Alva Edison. Whereas Thomas Alva Edison's life was different. There are no teachers or schools in his life. He had no chance of formal education. His teacher was a public library. His teacher was a public library. One of the greatest things that happened in his life was he came across two volumes of books of Michael Ferry. See the continuity. The experimental results of these two books gave edition a systematic approach to science and program how to educate himself in the field that upsets him. Faraday became, Faraday became his guru. Faraday became his guru of what you see in the electric bulb and light. There is a relative, relatively in this scientific triangle of the Humphrey and Michael Faraday, Thomas Alvarez. You will find it. They all will be a mentor. Always there was a mentor for the old young man. So, friends, I, what can I tell you about the conservation address? Just now, you just saw that uh, whenever we see a bulb and light, we remember the name of Thomas Alvarez. Same thing happened when the aircraft fly. We remember right with us. When the telephone bell rings, we remember Alexander Graham Bell. Alexander Graham Bell, 1805, when they discovered the telephone, we did not have a laboratory. His brain had become the laboratory, he assembled the whole telephone in his brain and went to market, got the devices and assembled it on the telephone. So friends, we also remember one lady, she got two Nobel Prizes and, and the Madam Curie for the discovery of radio and also characters in radio metal materials. Our own Indian scientist who has traveled from then the Calcutta in ninety years in the ship. When he moved there, he found that sun was shining, but sea was blue and the horizon and sky was blue. Why he asked? It took several years to discover he is due to back step in the light. So friend, all these people, all these people they are unique people. That's why you know that. 
And the question when you are writing in play, each one of you has a right What are you doing so far? You follow? You follow? Each one of you today has a graduate in day. That's a beautiful day today for you. Well, now the time starts for you, the life starts, T, T plus, God starts. What should you do here for? Each one of you. You remember right? I just said that. You remember aircraft? Right with this concept. You remember that static lines and see how it comes. That is purely the radio is coming from. So you find you have to ask yourself. You can be any area specialized, but you should be known. So first thing in your life, in your diary today, what are you doing on the floor? Friends, I, I have learned. I learned. I when I met, so far I have met with people in your youth, in a decade's time, in your age and below, 20 to 25. I learned the only thing you want to do with me, that is you. But the world around you is doing its best day and night to make you just to never do yours. So don't fall guilty for that. You should work for that to be a unique person. The challenge my young friends is that you have to fight the hardest battle which any human being can never imagine to fight and never stop fighting until you arrive at your destiny day that you need to do and uh, this is what uh, my father is a suggestion to you to become you. Now first, now friends, I am very happy. I am in the REC. We are the history of 40 years. 40 years history. And uh, how many students you have generated? How many research minds you have generated? And how many engineers from the nineteen future you have made a change in the society? So you have a very good life. When I was going through your record, the booklet, the central library, what you are going to get is a fantastic library, the shape I like, the architect I like. That library has got 85,000 books. I have a temptation to inform you. I can assist the NIT center to achieve 100,000 books from 85,000 to 100,000 books. And to add some e-books also, I would like to help them. The e-books also. So friends, I am also very happy that the NIC has adapted 10 million and you can call it the NIC NIT Sitcher Pura, Provide the Damage to Rural Media. And then I am very happy to know that you are working for energy independence. That means you are graduating to the biodiesel, your research work going on in the NIT, culture and biodiesel. I would like to congratulate you this type of work with that by students all. Now friends, I would like to I would like to share my thoughts on the topic. The excellence in research. The essence of it I am not going to talk. Read the program. But one thing I want to tell you, when you go on campus friends, remember all the graduating students, when you go out on this campus, you are going to have a new world. That world will see what worked yesterday will not work today. What worked yesterday? What worked yesterday will not work today. Dear friends, I was studying a book. You must study the book also. The book name is The Empires of the Mind by Dennis Lake. This book gives what type of world, what type of the new, new world which we are facing now, what was uh, yesterday, what is today. I have modified certain points of my order to suit occasion today. I want to add a, a third, third line which relates to the action of the leadership. The book specifically says what worked yesterday, 
will not work today. So you are getting to the world what work you say that will not work today. So that is the new world. That world is now like society. Now I am going to talk to you. Take point what work yesterday and what should work today. Yesterday, as you all know, natural resources defend the power. But today, it's not the natural resources defend the power, but it is knowledge the power. For example, there are nations. They don't have any natural resources like in Japan and Singapore. But they have the leading nation because of knowledge products. So institution, so basically, the institution should be acquired with that knowledge. Second point, yesterday, there are two other laws. Today, synergy is a mandate. That means, institution will be enabled for the intersection of the multiple faculties towards mission and goals. Yesterday, leaders commanded and control. Yesterday, leader commanded and control. Today, leader is not commanding and control. Today, leader empower and push. That means institution like uh, since the NID will be able to be exported to the needs of a sustainable development. Yesterday, shareholders came first, management shares were there. Today, customer comfort. That means institution to inculcate the sensitivity to the needs of all the stakeholders. Yesterday, the employees to work. Today, teams make it. Institution will promote teams to it. Yesterday, seniority. Signifies theater. Today, creativity drives the status, not the seniority. Number of years not going to come. Okay? The creativity drives the status. So remember, graduate, graduate students, very good, don't worry about their age, about their experience. But if you are man or woman of creativity, you are the winner. So today, we have to get the status institution will be judged by the innovation and promote creativity. Yesterday, <coughs> production determined the academy. Today, competition is assisted. Institution will constantly evolve more competitive with the knowledge, management and technology. Yesterday, value was extra. Yesterday, value was extra. Today, value is simple. Institution will have the priority to calculate the value addition to your free level. Yesterday, your free level is competitive. Today, your free level is a customer. Last point, yesterday, profits were yet to be experienced. Profits were yet to be experienced. Today, work with integrity and succeed with it. Work with integrity and succeed with it. Very happy. If graduating students repeat with me what I'm going to say. You are ready? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, I will. I will. Work with integrity. And succeed with integrity. That is the new crop of graduates entering in India. So you are going to work with integrity and succeed with integrity. When I see the creative young minds in the United environment, I am thinking what drives the culture of excellence? What drives the culture of excellence? That is innovation and creativity. Let us look at what is innovation. A nation economic development is powered by competitiveness. National economic development is powered by competitiveness. Competitiveness is powered by Powered by yes, knowledge. Knowledge is powered by technology. Technology is powered by innovation. So technology and innovation are powered by resource investment. Innovation opens up a new vista of knowledge and new direction to our imagination to make everyday life more meaningful, richer, in depth and content. Innovation born out of creation. What is creative? In a knowledge society, we have to make 
innovation continues. Innovation comes from creation. Creativity comes from beautiful minds. You can be anywhere, any part of the world. You can start from a vision and have it. Or a farmer's household. Or a daily farm. Or a cattle building center. Or it could emanate from classroom. Or laboratory. Or industry. Or R&D centers. Creativity has multiple everything to imagine. And invent something new by combining, shape, reappearing things like that. Like what Thomas Alva here said to you. The creative person has an attitude to accept change and newness. They have willingness to play with the ideas and possibilities. They have flexibility of output. The habit of enjoying the good while looking for great people. Creativity is a process to which we can continuously include ideas and find unique solutions by making gradual alteration and refinement to our works. The important aspect of creativity is seeing the same thing as every day, but thinking of something different, innovation, creativity, and creativity itself into culture of innovation and creativity ultimately result in a culture of excellence. Now friends, the excellence in thinking and action is the foundation for creating vision. What is excellence? Hopefully one of you graduate students, you should gain excellence. What is excellence? Friends, you all belong to the youth community, which should stand for a culture of excellence. Moreover, excellence is not by accident. It's a process where an individual or organization or a nation continuously strive to better oneself. These performance standards set by oneself. They work on their dreams with focus and are prepared to take calculated risks and do not deter by failure as they go towards their dreams. Then, then they step up their dreams so they fail to reach the original targets. They strive to work to their potential. In the process, they increase their performance thereby multiplying further their potential and this is an unending cycle of phenomena. They are not in competition with everyone else but themselves. That is the culture of excellence. I'm sure each one of you, the graduating students, will appear to become a unique with culture of excellence. Now friends, since you are all engineers, I thought of sharing with you what experience, teaching experience at the conclusion. You know, I had a 1954, 57, I was doing my aircraft engineering. None of you, particularly graduate students, do not be given the idea of all. In such a situation, my professor, very tough professor I had, Professor Srinivasan, is a great designer and a great uh, professor also and the aircraft designer. He called nine students and we are the practice in the fourth year, we are the nine students and we are not the students. There were people from the aerodynamics, structures, control, guidance, material, system engineering, and that everything in multiple fields. Uh, and I have been nominated by Professor uh, Srivastava as a project leader to see that that in six months time these nine guys, nine students bring out a, a project report or a design report design report called on low level attack aircraft 1.5 marks and low level attack aircraft six months time we have to do a full day with that say it was very hot those days we didn't have a computer we had a very slide book and not book not table. With this we managed to do some work and we worked hard of course we were in a very close measure. So they said a good time and my fellows disappeared at Saturday Sunday on the pictures in the pictures in the town. So we suggested we did work. Fifth month by direct by Professor Sidwasa landed my laboratory and reviewed all their work and said hope plus output. That there is a 
five months for the whole class also. Since a leader that is myself, he said, you only one month ago, you guys complete a desire, and if you don't do that, you are doing no desire, do this to a scholarship. I will take care of all of this. So with this situation, we just thank you for that. We worked very hard for one month and we generated a various type of design and the drawing load in the picture and the sort of drawings we generated all put together. One month was a rich, again, from the landed. We reviewed all the design and we said that we got to the good job. We took us to his house. Give us a better hard copy. If it's okay, teacher finally fires you that they appreciate you. That they are important. Every day is important. But what we learned in Aina first, at the product of system, system engineering, system integration, system management. We have six months intensive project. System, system design, System integration and system management. When you go to this campus as a junior, nobody will ask you to make a chemical engineering system that they are going to teach multiple engineering. Nobody will say system, you make a system, system design, system integration, system management. You should be ready for that. And also the energy picture, I, I would like to for the syndicated channel, I am waiting for recommendation. Very important, multiple disciplines of energy future should be brought. In the form of projects, six to ten students should work, multiple disciplines, work number of projects so that they become system designers, system integrators, and system managers. So, with it, now let's uh, finally uh, conclude. I am not telling Maji Kapachi. Maji Kapachi, I hope for uh, my friend Achi Katari knows about it. Maria Tapati, she was a lord, she was an author. As a young fellow in the Second World War, her father and mother were taken to jail. So she was uh, in, in, in Italian village, she was a village boy. And she joined with all types of people, she began, she began and all the same. His life was very miserable. When the boy who nine years old, mother protected him and he then took him to USA to the Alpisa Hunter's play and there he developed an interest in life science. Life science, that interest is developed into he, he the W.H. Watson, he also came into contact with the guru and then he developed what's called gene target. Deep down in the area, deep down in the area, are you prepared to become a specialist? And then, in 1980, his object was to do deep down in the experiment started in 1980 by, and by 1984. Kapaji had three years Three years later, he applied the technology mice. In 1989, he developed the first mice which targeted mutations. The technology created by Dr. Kapaji allows researchers today to create specific gene mutations anywhere in the tooth in the genetic code of a mouse. By replicating gene system this way, researchers are able to mimic human disease condition and animal subject. What the research of Mario Kapachi needs for human health is nothing short of amazing. His work with mice to lead to cure for Alzheimer's disease or even cancer. The innovation genetic can Mario Kapachi a street boy, Mario Kapachi, achieved, won him the Nobel Prize in 2007. Nobel on Kapachi's life in three weeks. What he learned? He learned. Then I wish I was a star. It makes no difference where. When I wish I was a star, it makes no difference who I am. Everything my heart desires, I will achieve. So he can achieve Mario Kapachi. He was so proud with this. I have discussed the convergence of technology and what uh, you are going to have. Four technologies going to convert this detail. The present detail of the detail, that is bioscience, nanoscience, information science, and ecology, ecology. The four fellows will combine 
that's called science exploring. So with this, I, I, I would like to say that uh, I would like to conclude the vision for 21st century history for national politics. I have the last ten years that more than two million university students, students of professional institutions, and practice with more than 150 universities and institutions in India, 50 universities abroad. Based on this spirit, I wish to formulate the vision for 21st century history of national politics. Number one, universities and even technical institutions have to prepare citizens of the future to grow for the world, be capable of serving a nation or nation of the future. Choice. Science and technology public policies are integrated for mutual benefit and sharing the human kind of work. Good teachers can be very part of the world. The institution has to bring in this resource to innovative content generation in virtual classes. Technological connectivity of universities and institutions have been pursued and awarded using cost of the virtual classes. Can university or NIT education lead to sustain the development of the nation? That means system without the villages to have the capacity of physical capacity, electronic capacity, knowledge capacity, due to economic capacity. With the world population increasing, resources to be in mindset and to develop for considering shared resources, look for a new resource for abundant resources. This calls for a global spirit as well as the research spirit. In summary, 21st century national education is about developing the education system for knowledge society for peace and prosperity of the nation and the world. So friends, in conclusion, in conclusion I will say that uh, uh, I would like to ask you, uh, I started the debate, I would like to ask you, would you like to be the part of the evolution of the next generation of scientific training as a follow-up to Chandra with X-ray and the Rekia group with the telescope and future to spread the way? Would you be the one who contributes to the vision of bringing the low-cost access to non-meeting reality? Would you be the technology leader in the supersonic operations plan making? Would you be the designer of AI to win the operation, awarding, prepared a separation of object institution and realizing the liquid object reactor for the use of non Will you be the technology leader for providing the highly efficient violent transmission of electrical energy from the solar power satellite to the terrestrial grid? So will you be the technology leader establishing the key of thermonuclear energy complex for power generation? Will you be one of the ones to walk on Mars as scientists and technology for established human and Will you dream to become the great pioneer like Constant Kishoki or God or Abhiman Bhatt or Vikram Sarvai? So with these words, I once again congratulate all the graduate students and my best wishes to faculty members and professors of the NIT system for sensing the vision of creating the enlightened system who are building the knowledge of writing, they got it.